नमस्कार हेलो एंड वेलकम टू पी गुरु चैनल आई एम योर होस्ट श्री आयर मंडे इवनिंग 6:30 पीएम इज कर्नल अजय रैना टाइम एंड टुडे ही इज जॉइंस अस अगेन एंड वी टेक अ क्विक लुक एट दिस यू नो बैक एंड फोर्थ बिटवीन ईरान एंड पाकिस्तान व्हाट हैपेंड द रिस्पांस एंड एंड एग्जैक्टली हु मेक्स द वेपन्स फॉर दीस कंट्रीज वी थिंक दैट इट कुड बी चाइना बट देयर हैव बीन सम सरप्राइजेस हियर एंड देयर टू नो ऑल अबाउट दिस एंड मोर लेट्स वेलकम कर्नल अजय रैना कर्नल रैना नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू पी गुरुस चैनल नमस्कार शेर जी नमस्कार गुड इवनिंग एवरीबॉडी जय श्री राम वेलकम टू यू सर वी टॉक लास्ट वीक और द वीक बिफोर दैट अबाउट द काइंड ऑफ वेलकमिंग एंड रिसेप्शन रामलाला गॉट इन पूंछ एंड आई होप थिंग्स आर सेटलिंग डाउन नाउ आई हैव नॉट हर्ड मच फ्रॉम एलओसी होपफुली थिंग्स आर क्वाइटनिंग डाउन बट अजय रैना जी I have been watching a few things. Let's take two or three instances where we've seen Pakistan do things that are not expected of it. For example, let's go back to Abhinandan. Abhinandan uh, takes down and um, you know he goes into the enemy territory or whatever happens. There is a there's a duel. This duel is between a MiG and a much more powerful F-16, and and I think both come down and and of course Abhinandan is captured. I also heard something about the pilot that came down from Pakistani side. Looks like the villagers thought he was not a Pakistani, and I think he got lynched to death or something like that. I'm not a hundred percent sure about that. You can mention that one thing. So that means even though Pakistan had JF-17 on which there were no curbs, they were nervous about using that. Instead, they use F-16 on which you know US has put some bouts. You can only do it for defense, not for offense. and and then what happened us came in and they did something i think now the f16s can only be taken off they can only take off with the permission of us first incident second incident you know remember the misfired brahmos from somewhere in haryana goes and lands inside pakistan 120 kilometers deep inside pakistan not loc or anything like that and the s300 knockoffs that pakistan had couldn't bring it down number 2 number 3 what we are seeing is with this new skirmish between iran and pakistan over you know militancy whatever it is that sulemani incident iran was successfully able to you know land its missiles in pakistan even though pakistan had the equipment to counter it nothing happened talk to us a little bit about what is going on also iran is able to effectively launch its missiles from hamas hezbollah and houthis okay one in 10 success rate but that is even even that is a very big number so iran on the other hand appears to have got a measure of the missiles and technology it's using is iran using chinese equipment or they are taking chinese equipment fixing the bugs not giving the bug fixes to china using it for themselves thoda sa confusion hai and you are an army man you are a history man you know exactly what is going on please let us know what is happening sir okay Shirji, uh, thanks once again for giving this opportunity. Yeah, when Abhinandan's duel took place, there's a other pilot was son of a retired field uh, air marshal of Pakistan Air Force, and uh, he was lynched by his own people. Out of shame, they couldn't even announce it, and he was given a quiet burial, which is, I think, uh, a worst thing which can happen to a slain soldier is that you know you don't even give him state honors. Uh, but that being the Pakistan, uh, I mean, we, we spoke enough about Pakistan. before we get into this china and pakistan uh, and reliability like you said missiles fire don't be fire i'll just tell you few things about iran see iran engineers in iran we spoken about it earlier they are the best in the world much better than germans no there's one thing called western propaganda okay you don't like somebody face or you paint him black other is actual capability iran started making their missiles This is a statement of General McKenzie himself uh, a couple of years back. He said Iran has got more than three thousand missiles. So three thousand missiles that means Israel has the biggest number of and largest and most diverse in West Asia. And if we think that Iran is aiming to hit America, no, they are not. They don't they don't have to hit American uh, uh, mainland. You are safe, Shirji. But their targets are American targets in the, in their neighborhood. For that, they are catered for missiles. Starting from 300 kilometers range, that's Shahab, which also called, which is also called a Scud missile, Russian origin basically, uh, to Juliaha, which is 5,000 kilometer. Iran, uh, interestingly, had uh, imposed a curb of on itself that they will not uh, 
develop a missile missile which will which will have range more than 2000 kilometers and reason given is what i told you their aim is to dominate area around it and in the neighborhood they have enough american targets israel and all those things whom they don't like but that embargo is only you know it was it is one sided uh, pledge taken by iran and it could be uh, uh, taken out any time because this Jujiaha, which I said, 5,000 kilometers uh, range is much is more than double that limit which they have imposed on themselves. Now, uh, they have a missile called Khorim Shahar, and it has many versions. Again, it's a same missile. Interesting thing is, all their missiles, Shiriji, from 300 kilometers to 5,500 kilometers, most of them are nuclear warhead capable. The UN had requested them, no, 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 please do, because they understand. The UN had requested or asked Iran couple of years back, three years back, in fact, okay, you should be, you do develop your missiles, but nothing with nuclear warhead. And uh, after October 23, how Iran is going to take it, we don't know. But as we speak, uh, the missile which they fired on US air base in 2020 in Iraq was a QM-1, which is the short range ballistic missile. Uh, one thing you asked me about the Chinese stuff and all, we must understand, Shiriji, that there are two types of propellants which are used in missiles and rockets. One is solid and one is fuel, uh, liquid. Iran also started as liquid. But problem with the liquid thing is you have to actually take the missile to the side where you're going to launch it and then fill it up. So a vigilant enemy will strike you there while the petrol, you're pumping up the fuel, you are getting hit. Though it has a very good torque. When it takes off, the liquid thing gives you, gives the missile a very good push initially but otherwise solid fuel technology is much better much stable easy to store easy to carry and it can be just deployed and fired so iran also switched over they started with liquid like this uh like i was mentioning shahab shahab one these are liquid one qm which they fired liquid one thereafter most of the missiles are solid ones solid fuel so i don't actually think they might have taken help from you uh china but unlike uh pakistanis they are not dependent on them Shirji, the fact that Iran is showing teeth to everybody uh, tells us they have the in-house capability and there's a fear which people have. Uh, so, and interestingly, they also have space uh, launch vehicle capability. So, same thing can actually convert a normal missile into intercontinental ballistic missile. So, Iran, so <laughs> when they <coughs> hit Pakistan, it was at their will. When, they, when Pakistan retaliated, how the match was fixed, that will come out some subsequently. Uh, now we look at the other part of it, that is <clears throat> Chinese uh, stuff and F-16 and all that. F-16s were given to Pakistanis by Americans to uh, look after their own territory. So it's very surprising that a democratic country, the champion of democratic cause, gives fighter latest fire, uh, fighter uh, aircraft of 80s <laughs> to a country called Pakistan, so that Pakistan could use it against Baloch, they could use them against anybody. So they are not supposed to be operating beyond frontiers of Pakistan. And we all know that if Pakistan comes to that and if America actually behaves, they are capable of uh, uh, putting these uh, F-16 out of action and Pakistani pilots will not be able to take off. Now, we need to understand when it comes to Chinese and Pakistan equation, there, there's this interesting uh, kind of uh, development uh, which has happened. Chinese started selling equipment to military equipment to Pakistan in 1972. That was the time and Americans were also good friends of Pakistan. So there were no issue. But over the last 50, 60 years, these Chinese, the pace of Chinese equipment coming to Pakistan army has actually overtaken other all other equipment. I'll just give you a brief of it. Plus what happened in 1990s when nuclear proliferation, the fears came and 9-11 happened. And thereafter, America has actually stopped giving any kind of sensitive equipment to uh, Pakistan. It's only when India showed eyes to America during the Ukraine thing. So they they cleared a package of $450 million to upgrade F-16 with a clause that no weapon will be upgraded. Their systems and everything else will be upgraded. So it's, it's basically a face saving uh, thing. But when US refused and thereafter France also refused, Pakistani Air Force has Mirages and they have Agosta 90B submarines, French ones. French flatly refused. That's why French is a better friend than American when it comes to India. They refuse. They will not give you. Germans, they, they also have submarines in Pakistan with the AIP technology. They also refuse to uh, upgrade. When all these things were happening, when these things were being denied in 90s and 2000s, so China stepped in. And of course, Pakistan never had money to pay off uh, because US will give it free. Others, others will ask for money. So they didn't have enough money. From 1970, when China started, 
लास्ट फिफ्टीन ईयर्स लास्ट फिफ्टीन ईयर्स चाइना हैज गिवन वेपन टू पाकिस्तान आर्मी एयरफोर्स नेवी अराउंड एट पॉइंट फाइव बिलियन डॉलर एट पॉइंट फाइव बिलियन डॉलर नो दिस इज सेम अमाउंट विच चाइनीज गेव टू पाकिस्तान इन द प्रोसीडिंग फोर्टी ईयर्स सो इन फोर्टी ईयर्स इज गेव वर्थ एट पॉइंट फाइव एंड नेक्स्ट फिफ्टीन ईयर्स आई मीन फिफ्टीन ईयर्स फ्रॉम बैक इफ यू अकाउंट फ्रॉम टूडे दे गिवन एट पॉइंट फाइव सो बेसिकली चाइना इज द बिगेस्ट सप्लायर ऑफ वेपन टू पाकिस्तान now beauty of this thing is today 72% uh, arms of pakistan last 6 years and this is report of that sipri the stockholm based international peace research institute that last 6 years uh, 72% of weaponry bought by or taken on loan which are reformed by pakistan has come from china now while all these we we know this these things are happen we should also understand that what is the, like you hinting at that what is the reputation of chinese pakistanis have taken on they have replaced western equipment as the chinese stuff is coming in the us and french things are retiring getting out of service we all know that chinese work on reverse engineering concept they don't have any kind of in house innovation or they copy from outside and they start reversing it and reverse engineering as we know it chinese weapons are also known to kill on both sides enemy as well as the guy who's firing it so that this is reputation Bangladesh took PT 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 six trainers from them, and said, "Sorry, we done a mistake." Uh, then kilo eight W whiskey uh, ammunition didn't fire. They sold Chinese sold UAVs to Royal jo Jordanians. Jordanians then sold it to some African country because they they knew they were crashing like anything. Nigeria F sevens bought from China, returned with thanks. Three crashed, seven returned. So this is the reputation. Myanmar GF seventeen, which Pakistan has in good numbers. they said your radars don't work and when china didn't give them any support they requested pakistan to send their technicians to myanmar to repair the radars so the problem with chinese equipment is they they are never tested they just produced from the factory and sold sold like you are like selling uh, something like footwear or something i mean it's just a, but costs are low bribes work like fantastic in chinese system and all investments in china we all know belong to people who who hold power in ccp so ccp leaders have investment interests in their defense industry and their defense industry then sells weapon and then <clears throat> there are other countries who buy it for non battle purposes like somebody wants just to create a kind uh, of uh, mapping of area or gps or whatever but year on year decrease in chinese exports world over has been 23% last 5 years every year chinese exports are going down to 23% in case of pakistan they're coming up 72% now look at the psyche of uh, uh, pakistanis they have sold themselves to a country which enjoy the which enjoys the reputation which i just mentioned few of them despite knowing that they're unreliable these equipments can misfire they can backfire they can do lot of funny things today pakistan navy has 30% of its equipment is chinese air force has 48% and pakistan army has 45% in in next 7 years this is again from uh, usa uh, peace institution all these figures are going to increase and slowly slowly everything western is going to come down now i'll, I'll just to illustrate that what you were saying that performance of these weapons they bought four frigates multi role frigates from china this is 2005 deal 750 million dollar something three were to be made in china and one was to be made in karachi so this jangjo a class of uh, frigates so frigates as we understand shri ji are the ships small ships which have air defense role they are supposed to protect the mother ship in a big fleet and they also do this what in our navy does counter uh, uh, pirates uh, securing the trade corridors in the sea so this is a role so all these all four of them they were they came to pakistan with a lot of halla bulla and then once they were deployed so there there lot of performance and maintenance issues came up substandard parts missile system not working radars not uh, having any accuracy so their air defense cover which was supposed to be given by those four frigates is gone it's nullified when your radars are not working so how, how are you going to detect and fire the somebody who's coming in uh, airborne object similarly they had 76 mm guns on those frigates they miss fire engines have leakage problems i am reminded of no <laughs> some old vintage 70 model truck on on a highway with engine leak so they have frigates which have engine uh, they have uh, i think three or four engines each they have leakage problems stabilizer system the gyros don't work 
So end of the day, you have a, a, a family of frigates, which you are very proud of, but you know in your heart that your operational efficiency and reliability is reduced quite a bit. Coming to your favorite JF-17, JF they wanted 250 pieces. They have, I think, 170, I think they've come since 2007. Now, problem with JF-17 is the engine in JF-17 is Russian. So after Americans put those uh, sanctions on uh, Chinese, uh, on Russians after Ukraine, so it's anybody's imagination that how this JF-17 uh, fighters will be further manufactured by China and then uh, kind of have that kind of reliability, which Russian engine were good. Now that thing is, uh, you know, Russia is not getting uh, raw material for its own um, engine. Uh, J-10C, 36 pieces they wanted to buy in, in 2009, then they, they ran out of money and now the supply has started. Uh, three air uh, early warning aircraft, they are Z series, ZDK they call it. Zulu Delta, Delta Kilo. So too many technical uh, terms, some UAVs. What I'm trying to say is that all these equipment, which Pakistan does a lot of thump, uh, just thumping that we got from Chinese, they're failing one after another. So when you say that, like you mentioned in the morning also, that is Pakistan a laboratory for Chinese equipment? I'll say yes. So Chinese manufacture something. Like I said, it, they don't trial, they don't carry out full trials. You know, one, once a defense equipment is manufactured, uh, in, firstly, during development, a lot of trials happen. Once it is made and produced one piece, the equipment is supposed to put through field trials. Now, field trials in India, a country like India means equipment will go to deserts, will go to high altitude, will go to jungles in northeast, it will go to seaside. So you see the survivability of that equipment because where this equipment is going to be placed finally, and most armies prefer that one equipment should be able to serve all sectors. So those kinds of trials are not carried out by Chinese. So they have Pakistan. Who, who does all this on their behalf and most of the time they suffer. So when, for example, the missiles are fired back on Iran and what accuracy and what, so Uska results Chinese must be studying because Chinese never fired it on ground. So this is actually a Chinese, coming to army, they have VT-4, the MBT-3000 Chinese main battle tank, which is replacing T-90 of uh, Chinese uh, armed forces. Again, before induction, very good. Post induction, fail. The Al Khalid and T90 uh, tanks, as it is, are not reliable. They, they are getting old. And the maximum battle winning today's world, uh, Shiriji, today's war is fought by, I mean, there's a dominance of air and then drones and RT and air defense for your own protection. And Chinese maximum equipment of Pakistan artillery and AD artillery, these equipments are Chinese. They have 203 towed guns and then they have SH 15 uh, SP guns. All of them problems actually <clears throat> their guns have something called ram rammer assembly rammer is something which you shove the round inside the barrel so it is all automated so those things don't work so you have a gun which can't be loaded so if it can't be loaded it can't be fired and then they have breaches which fall off when they fire the breaches versus shiriji the terrorist sent by pakistani using chinese equipment also facing problems chinese grenade since 90s in kashmir we we handle so many they don't work, burst <laughs> and if they burst I mean, if you're just two feet away, you will survive. You are, you have to be unlucky that day that you get killed by a Chinese grenade. So even ter or with the poor terrorists, that cannon fodder which is pushed into Kashmir by Pakistani, they also carry. Only good thing for them now is body cams, which you would have seen in Poonch and Rajori, that the telecast, that thing, live streaming of uh, uh, slaughtering of our troops happens. That is Chinese. Snipers used in uh, the last Poonch action was... Uh, Chinese communication devices uh, are Chinese and to help terrorists operate inside India the cyber and the drone cover is again Chinese but the thing is uh, overall if you look at if I as I am a soldier I am given an option to pick up a Chinese equipment and go and start fighting I'll have my second uh, I mean I'll have two three four thoughts in my mind and that doesn't augur well for uh, any country or any force so this is I've just given you a whole picture what what, what's happening in Iran and what is happening in Pakistan. Uh, Iran, I have my doubts that it's depending on Chinese. They might be taking their help. Everybody takes each other's help. Uh, Pakistan is fully dependent on uh, Chinese and they're digging their grave deeper every passing day. So this is how the equipment profile is. Rest you can imagine why things are not firing accurately, why they're going left and right and why their uh, S-300 is not able to intercept because I doubt if the Russians also given them proper as, as 300. Russia is our friend after all. They have Russian equipment also, uh, Pakis. They have Russian equipment. 
but with the every passing day as americans increase their influence inside pakistan russia has its own uh, uh, issues with pakistan so militarily that's why i say pakistan militarily is beyond uh, that limit where it can challenge it you know it can't it can only do this sending terrorist the thousand cuts or 2000 cuts whatever cuts so this is a situation sheri ji from a soldier's perspective i know i have used lot of technical uh, terms i i only hope viewers will tolerate oh, I, will... i think we have done enough coverage people that yeah. watch our program are watching channels like gunner shot and def talks where you are a regular and and they understand that a lot of these technologies uh, chinese you know they play double game in the sense that they are the partner of russians they get s300 s400 i'm hearing your s500 also on the one side they are importing all these things on the other side they are busy trying to clone it and making their own knock off versions i don't think russia will be pleased with that and another, another interesting story i want actually two stories i'm going to share and then you i want you to weigh in with your impression because your perspective is fresh for our viewers and also viewers who are watching it in the united states please send this thing to your congressman and senator these people have no end of ego thinking that they can make iran dance to their tunes and this is a huge fallacy and assumption take a look at this india has been proven right the way us mishandled the invasion of iraq if they had listened to india india had information they said 80 years ago they had gone and stabilized iraq 1920s um, they had gone and stabilized iraq and it was mostly indian troops that did that and uh, they said we'll give you all the data how you need to go about interacting with culture and then they got this hot shot guy jerry brackenheimer or something like that something jerry something and he went in and he completely fired the uh, army of uh, saddam hussein without checking bad apples versus you know the lower ranks are going to just follow orders and do it and because yeah. of they did they, jerry bremer i think because of that what ended up happening was all these guys went and joined isis so you us is sometimes a very stupid in the, in the way they approach some of these things my my two cents anyway my two stories are like this the first one is huawei this is their you know technical star this is their cisco equivalent this is their uh, you know any any high tech company in uh, in silicon valley huawei does it in even better now turned out that huawei itself is run by a retired chinese general and uh, his daughter who was wanted for financial crimes in the united states was arrested upon landing in canada yeah. china yeah. in turn to get her back i heard that they imprisoned two canadian uh, citizens and there was a quid pro quo and that girl left back to uh, china and they were trying to get hold of uh, all the data it was under trump regime they were trying to you know because huawei has one thing again nobody wants to say about this but i'll say this here there are articles that you can read what huawei used to do was anything that was manufactured in china for example you know all these uh, web servers that we are building out amazon uh, apple and uh, many companies even cisco or not cisco uh, we have microsoft now building servers google built servers we know IBM. for a, for yeah for for a fact we know two companies apple as well as amazon their servers had the special chips that essentially what they would do is they would call back china and upload whatever was there on the rack at a, at some time even today i think 90 to 95% of all websites that are in function in today millions of websites they all run on the same set of operating system called lamp stack linux apache mysql and php don't worry about the name think lamp lamp like the bulb so what these chips used to do was they would suck all the information from these websites because the lamp stack is full of holes you can easily get through that and they were sending information back to china and they were looking out which company is doing what and so on and so forth they can also bring down any site if they want to they were caught so the trump administration wanted to you know catch hold of the cfo and uh, you know make sure that Huawei would pay, you know, play along. Instead, what they have done is they have taken Trump out of the picture, and now you have a much more pliant Biden administration, which uh, you know, there, see, this is the thing is, as a president of United States, he is not, uh, you know, rebutting 
a claim that he and his family took 32 million dollars as bribes 32 million dollars as bribes from a now closed it used to be called china um, energy commission or something like that uh, the cfec is the name of the company they've closed it down because all these things started coming out 32 million dollars it's a there's a book called red handed that talks about it nobody has said anything about it instead they are fighting about 100000 dollar check that cleared in wells fargo bank come on guys there's a huge money trail that has been you know uh, uh, shown in that book i don't know what republicans also do when they are in majority they got to go for the jugular anyway this is just my two cents so you have huawei as a major technology provider and also it sneaks in and takes data why i'm saying all this they threatened india that they can bring down india's power grid and they did in october 2020 if i remember for 13 mumbai. hours much of mumbai was off and they, then i did some research and i found some data and i talked to some yes electricity board engineers who were working with this it turned out that when Huawei gave, see, right now India is on an automatic electric grid in the sense that if one state is producing more and another state needs that, you can buy that and it automatically gets transferred. The electricity comes to a state that needs the power. This used to be not possible before. Everything was localized. All that stuff is now done. Beautiful. So who did all this stuff? Mostly Chinese equipment. Now, it turns out that these equipment, they're all operable computer-wise. And much of this thing is controllable from outside of India, namely China. So this is how they brought this thing down. And uh, I don't know whether India has closed the loophole or not. I'm hoping that they did because after that, nothing happened. You have, can you talk a little bit about this? Because then the second story, I'll tell you, I want your input on this one. Okay. Shiriji, not only uh, uh, the servers the biggest or the most expensive u.s warship and british warship they were shut down in the middle of a sea news leaked out later on could see these oh this is emp emp yeah. electromagnetic parts. not only emp yeah. emp is like it's an attack you right. you have your chips inside the <laughs> in the system so once you capture a system which is operating the ship and it just sees it so like india yes uh about a couple of years back the orders came in black and white uh First thing India did that is any hundred million dollars uh, uh, contract, and below that there'll be no, they'll not be open for Chinese firms. And secondly, in defense at least, and government purchases, all Chinese equipment has been banned, Chinese electronic equipment. So there's a halla, there's a lobby be saying, how can you do this? How can you stop all this overnight? But India took that step. So at least, and in fact, Indian Army now has its own. Uh, uh, Linux kind of a version, uh, which which is not dependent on any of the fancy things. We learned our lesson from what happened to US and uh, UK warships. So fortunately, with this government on top, despite all bureaucrats having their kids studying in US and elsewhere, <laughs> they have closed the loops. Most of loops. I I can't be really saying that India has closed all the loopholes. That is, I think, impossible uh, thing to say. Uh, but yes, in defense and government machinery, basic things like computers, servers where these uh, chips are being used, they've been stopped. That is, uh, I think, is, is a good sign. Yeah. Um, see, th th this um, viewers, every one of these things, I have um, actually used these things in, in my books in a fictional form. For example, the electromagnetic pulse incident that happened in high seas in the Pacific, there was a cruise ship. A cruise ship carries like 5,000 passengers. It's like a city on ship. I mean, it's it's amazing. I, I've been on cruises. It's wonderful. Ten days, you get dined, wined, and fed, and and ten twenty pounds is just like that. You gain, and then you have to worry what the heck. Nothing fits anymore. That's what happens okay. on a cruise experience. And um, so, but so what had happened was uh, off the coast of Mexico, uh, one cruise ship just completely stopped working, and it was an EMP, and the EMP was fired from supposedly a Chinese submarine. But at that point of time, Obama was the president and he was traveling of all places in India. And it okay. took them a few hours to get reach him to get the uh, authorization to go after this submarine. By the time everything came through, these guys have escaped. So China couldn't be uh, you know, pinned for the blame. And, and then China also put enough data there to look as if 
Russia did it. And Russia had to give a disclaimer. No, 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 we didn't do it. Okay. So all these things happen. It's, it's captured in one of my books called uh, Who Painted My State Purple? Um, so you, you do read fiction, but I also weave in all these facts in the form of, uh, uh, you know, storylines because China is capable of completely, you know, taking over U.S. elections today. The U.S. are too stupid and proud to not admit it. I, I'm, I'm saying this again and again because I have studied the process of elections in U.S. It is one of the stupidest, most backward ways in which they elect their president or we elect our president. I'm, I'm, I'm equally complicit in this. I'm, I'm seeing the new one. There is a by-election coming up uh, in March. And uh, I, I'm looking at the thing. They are saying we have no connection to any networks. <laughs> this is in the, in the catalog. This is mail-in votes. So they are saying from 15th February, mail-in votes will be accepted. And please be assured that none of the machines are connected via network. Because see... The thing about this is when I write something, this book came three years ago. There are people who are reading this. They said, oh, 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 now people are beginning to ask all these questions. Let's try to close some of these holes. So a lot of stuff happening. All I'm trying to tell you is you, somebody will start saying, okay, now he's trying to sell his book. I have to tell you what is in the book. And the book yeah. is a little, little bit thick and everybody thinks, oh, four, five hours to lag jayenge. do I want to read it? Well, you should read Colonel Rana's books. 20 plus books he has written. Mine, I've already crossed 10. My goal is to hit 108 before I go. Meet my okay. maker. But we'll see what happens. What Ganesha Willing. For me. Ganesha <laughs> Willing. Ganesha <laughs> Willing. Shirazi. Yes, Ganesha Go Willing. Ahead. Exactly. By the way, your painting behind you is very, very nice. Uh, Colonel Sap. It's, it's a, for a difference, it's a female who's playing the flute. Yeah. And I, I like that thing. There you go. Beautiful. 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 Huh. So let's get back to the second thing that happened. Yeah. Ukraine war starts. Russia starts Ukraine war and uh, US starts putting all these sanctions. Now, Russia has also developed its own version of Intel chip. And on that, you can run most of the Intel software. Except Russia doesn't have the technology to fabricate it, these chips. Russia had fabricated processes from the East Germans, 1980s, when they are part of USSR. There was a East Germany had actually built a semiconductor fab. Today you are talking 10 nanometer. That probably is one micrometer, a thousand times bigger. And and uh, you know nobody's uh, you know they, nobody dares tell Putin the reality that uh, these things are just maza tamasha ke liye. And they were quietly buying all these things through China or directly from Taiwan. So once that stopped, Russia also has huge problems now. And finally, somebody broke it open to Putin saying that we don't have any more chips for new technology. So I have my doubts whether S-400 that you, India has been promised, whether they're going to make it or not, unless they have found a way to smuggle in all these chips, which is entirely possible. Every time there is a ban, there is an equally efficient smuggling route that finds all these things replaced also. This is, this is the way it is. Because US can ban things on the West. The West will comply with sanctions. I mean, uh, I've heard that, you know, many Taiwanese engineers are still working in China, where even though they were told expressly to get back to mainland. So basically, the technical sector in China is run by Taiwanese. I mean, I'm telling you this. Investment-wise, as well as technology-wise, it's Taiwan that is supporting China. That is one of the reasons why China wants to occupy Taiwan, because they feel that with them in more closer contact and more... You know, they, they can distribute them across the population. They can become much more powerful. And for the same reason, U.S. is trying to thwart it. My two cents. So back to you. Did you hear anything about Russia's problem delivering on high-end uh, ammunition products, weapons? Shirji, as 400, there has been a delay and delay attributed to something else. But you are right. There you go. That is the, <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's the thing. But you know, what happens at that level is totally, I mean, beyond our uh, imagination at times. You never know. India to speed it up, maybe smuggling it to, into Russia itself. Uh, who knows what happens. But you are right. All these sanctions happen. You heard about the Russian perfume reaching European markets and good numbers. And you know, then. So the thing is, there's a world which is invisible to most of us which operates under the shadows. And through that world, a lot of things happen. Uh, there have been cases where countries are fighting and then supplying each other. <laughs> I mean, 
you actually have to read history shiriji to find out because these things come out 50 60 70 years later when you are two countries at war actually buying each other stuff supplying to each other to fight more so you never know uh, as 400 offshore region is different but all of us know that uh, this could be crucial uh, that is actually the thing uh, now with chinese having lot of influence over russia russia today's bit of is a bit a bit of kind of hostage uh, to chinese whims and fancies so russia will have difficulties even buying from taiwan so can it happen that india buys from taiwan and gives it to russia who knows because chip is only one part of has big component calls has 400 uh, but i think it will work out rishir ji uh, we shouldn't be saying things which <laughs> which 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 i mean which are not okay no, we, you understand we, that we are we so, are basically telling you all the dots how you want to yeah. connect it is yeah, up to connect, you. yeah it's up to the <laughs> listeners yeah viewers how yeah. they connect it yeah. yes well, thank, you so much, uh, yeah. thank you so much thank you so much colonel rana we have a few in fact we have a lot of questions let, let's take a quick look at the questions okay <clears throat> santu santu rohit wants to know ajay sir what are the pros and cons of granting six scheduled statehood to ladakh this is uh, not connected but it's a current topic if you ask me in one yes and no we must give them uh, status there's a program and that talks 10 o'clock today we'll talk about it in detail i think this is something is a irritant which government i don't know why they're keeping it it should be sorted out they deserve six schedule should be given they suffered enough uh, shiriji 70 years of neglect uh, ladakh and the so eco- uh, ecology is so fragile they need this kind of protection this doesn't mean that be like non ladakh is can't go and do business there no that's not the aim people are misunderstanding what is being said so more about it later uh, six schedule should be given yeah it, it it has been given to so many states can be given uh next question from sai kumar sir besides pakistan have supplied chinese supplied equipment to any other country any feedback yeah sai kumar ji mentioned about jordan i mentioned about nigeria who sent the ships uh, aircraft back bangladesh myanmar uh the radars went off road and pakistan mission had to be called because china didn't send the technicians so whomsoever they sold they are either returning or crashing and still pakistan is buying i i if you see the entry again uh, the podcast again i named all those countries jordan nigeria bangladesh burma yeah so ek ek one question for you for follow up on this you know yeah. balakot happened because india knew that they can't retaliate because these are the kind of equipment that they are they were having chinese and the defense minister next day says there was no power that's why we couldn't bring down <laughs> yeah andhera tha he said andhera tha andhera tha nazar nahi aaye so <laughs> then um, then what is their you know uh, testicular gravitas to keep you know poking in loc because if india decides to do another bala port it can do it much more devastating they can take out things like abbottabad shirji uh, pakistanis do things for others for money okay if they're poking india today they're getting nothing but they're poking india maybe somebody sitting in where you are sitting they want us him to poke india because india is not behaving or maybe china wants uh, them to poke india or they have a parallel government run by isi they are poking india see shirji they have pakistani ki ek there's one thumb rule you must remember they are very good at tactics so coming and sitting in kargil when post for vacated winter vacated that's a good tactics they screw up strategy so when they got a slap back they went running to nawashi went running to usa so pakistani they say no chota dimag choti soch so they keep you think they'll think of all this what will happen if india retaliates they don't think they're very good happy firing a <laughs> few rounds here few rounds there they lack strategic uh, vision and that's been their problem 71 sachin 99 you 65 so tactically they are very good they they surprise you and india will get on to back foot for a while but when india hits back then they don't know where to run so let them try what they are trying uh, they are on suicidal mission they also do things on rent so reasons could be any but they, they know if india wants to slap slap them back india will and they they won't know where to go <laughs> next question please rahul basu wants to know any plan for getting back pojk and gilgit baltistan today is february 5th so called fake solidarity day any videos emerging from there people are protesting as pakistan this 5th february for a change uh they will come back by themselves to us how we are going to handle we spoken in this in this very channel that what are pros and cons 
uh, ultimately what belongs to india will come back to india how it comes uh, that needs to be seen war i don't think is an option and india will not exercise war option uh, but this they will come back partha wants to know how do you see defense expo in riyadh you have defense ex see defense ex defense expo what is basically a trade fair so in fact you must see when uh, de defense expo happens in pakistan and all these west west asian countries come to pakistan and then chinese come with full ship load they come with aircraft submarines everything so these are business uh, uh, partha ji these are business uh, affairs people keep doing it all over uh, the world we also have air show which is also kind of defense expo which happens in bangalore so this is nothing special who's going to buy and who's going to sell that is that's what matters in the end and defense expo have a bit of role not much those who want to buy they'll find and buy next question please sudeep limai wants to know has pakistan army got really stretched in terms of fronts and equipment of course equipment they have ammunition they don't have and they open three fronts now so they are stretched yes is our decency that we are not make exploiting that weakness maybe we are exploiting somewhere but not along our borders so yeah they are stretched next one please Rahul Basu again. Will Tibet ever become independent? If we believe in natural justice, yes. Not only Tibet, Xinjiang will also become independent. A lot more more territories which will become independent. Ganesha willing, Tibet must. Ganesha willing, yes, indeed. Thank you so much, Kanal Raina viewers. I hope you like this program. And if you did, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications. Namaskar. Namaskar, Shit. Thank you.